So this is assembly, it arrived last week um, and I thought I'd do a quick run through to help people who've um, back to the game and now are receiving their copies of the game and maybe haven't played before or maybe it's a while since you've played. Um, the story behind the game is that you've been working on an orbital platform manufacturing uh, luxury spacecraft. Um, a shower of meteorites hits your uh, orbital platform and one of those was carrying some sort of deadly virus which has wiped out the crew leaving just you and one other survivor or just you if you're playing the solo version. The object of the game is to get all the modules into place on the correct uh, blueprint so that you can complete the building of the luxury spaceship and then you can fly to safety. Okay. The very first thing that we need to do is to set the game up. Uh, these are the malfunction cards, so these go out like this. The ones that I'm playing with here are the ones with uh, no actual malfunctions on and no glitches. The malfunctions for these are on the reverse. There's three sets, A, B and C, um, and each of them does different things. Okay. The uh, extension pack also comes with glitches. And all of those things are extra layers of difficulty once you've mastered the basic game. The bay cards then are shuffled and then they're laid out starting at 12. Then you put the modules in two piles in the middle and you start by rolling the dice, the die I should say, and placing one of those modules on a card. So you can see that the transporter one is on the engineering blueprint. The way that we get those into the correct place is by using our command cards. And you've got um, a range of commands. You've got rotate, anti-clockwise or clockwise. You've got draw up and lock one or two bays, you've got swap, you've got rotate and then you've got rotate the opposite way. Okay and they're your commands. You've got three rounds to complete the building and to escape. At the end of the first round you shuffle that card in, at the end of the second round you shuffle the wild card in. That enables you to do one action, but it's got another function as well, which I'll explain to you just now. And to start the game, each player gets three cards each, and the rest go into a draw pile. Okay? So we've got our cards would remain hidden from each other, but just to demonstrate, I'm just going to show you. So these are my cards. I've got two cards which enable me to draw up, and one card that enables me to rotate in either direction. And the person I'm playing, how well shuffled are these? Amazing, well done, Am. Uh, can draw up or lock two, okay? And there are different ways of playing, so there are different levels of communication that we can have that make the game varyingly difficult. The first level of communication allows you to discuss strategy broadly, but not use any of the key words that are on the uh, commands cards, so such as deploy, lock, swap or rotate. So we could have broad discussions about strategy, but as soon as we use any of those words, the computer would lock down our communication and that would be it for that round. We wouldn't be able to discuss any further. So the way it works is one of us will choose to play a card. Remember, these would be hidden, so you wouldn't be able to see and I wouldn't be able to see your cards. So on this occasion, I'm going to draw one of the modules up. So I'm using that action because the person I'm playing with has that card, they can verify my command. And that means that they don't have to discard a card, they keep their cards. So I'm going to draw up a module. Oops, <laughs> six. Okay, so six is already occupied, so we, we go clockwise round, so it's going to go on bay number seven. Okay, and then I draw up at the end of my turn, so I'm back on three cards. This player is going to do the same action because there's nothing to lock because they're not in the correct places. So they're going to get a three. Ah, now that's on security, so that's good. So for my turn, I'm going to lock that one just to demonstrate how that works. So I can lock one or two. I'm just going to lock one. They're able to verify that, so that's fine. OK. 
Okay, now then, this player is going to decide that they're going to draw up another module. And that's going to go on number two. Now on this occasion, I wasn't able to verify that command because I couldn't match that card. So I need to discard one of my cards. I'm going to discard this one because it only allows me to move, move in that set direction where this gives me more choice. So this time they draw up at the end of their go and it's now my turn. But I don't draw up until the end of my turn. So I'm a little bit restricted now because I've only got two cards to choose from. Play continues um, in that way. If I play a rotate card, all of the modules rotate. So if I was to place this one, and I'm gonna go that way to get that one into the right place, I'm gonna go one space, I'm just gonna move them off. I'm gonna start at 12, that one's locked, so I go past it. This one goes into the correct space, and this one goes here, okay? So you just need to remember that they all move. And then at the end of my go, I would draw up two. Okay, so that continues until we get to the end. Here, look. When you draw up and there are no more cards to refresh your hand, then that round ends. This card gets shuffled in. And that's the end of round one. And the other thing that happens is that these come off and any unlocked blueprints are shuffled and put back out on the bays. So anything you've not locked down there, you can lose. Okay, so they'd be shuffled and dealt out again. I haven't shuffled them very well, I'm just showing you. So they get shuffled. The modules remain in the same place, so they just go back onto those cards and you go again. You do the same, follow the same thing until you get to the end of the second round you put that card in when there are no more cards left here you know that when you get to the last card here the game is over okay so the other thing that you've got is you've got special abilities and you've got those either written on here or there's some picture symbols and you can have it on whichever side that you want you just do that once per game okay so, and they're different different things, but you would have those at the beginning of the game and then you would announce what your special ability was and you work together to try and resolve it and try and lock everything down. Um, and that's about it. So it's quite, it's quite quick to learn and quite straightforward, but it's really, really good fun. It's really interesting to play. Um, and I will go through the solo version as well. So I'll put a separate video on for that so that I'm not wittering for too long in one go. But that's the two player version. Um, it also comes with a little deck refresh and turn order, little reminders of what to do, which is very useful. And if you um, treated yourself to the luscious playmat, that's also on here as well, which is very useful. Um, it also saves people being distressed by my gorgeous tablecloth, because um, I know that upsets people, I can't think why. So there we are, that's assembly.